Art comes in many shapes and sizes. Artists often follow earlier conventions whilst trying to add their own original touch. Where an artist aims for originality, a mathematician might try to categorize and classify. Please join me, Balar Sandri, Professor of Pure Mathematics at the University of Oxford, as I explore some of the treasures of the Ashmolean Museum in search of some underlying patterns in art. The objects we are going to look at come from a variety of places and historical times, known collectively as the Islamic world. This description covers a vast area, at times stretching from Spain through Northern Africa and Asia Minor, all the way to Afghanistan and beyond. One of the unifying features of the art of the Islamic world is a certain distinctive style of decoration. Islamic decoration tends to use beautiful geometric patterns that were developed over centuries. These patterns were displayed on stucco, stone, wood, mosaic and paintings, as well as of smaller objects that survive very well, glazed ceramic wall tiles. Let us start by looking at this pair of wonderful tiles decorated with flowers and leaves created around the middle of the 16th century in Ottoman Turkey. We should imagine not just two tiles like here in the museum, but a large, richly decorated room with a strip of such tiles running the length of the room. This arrangement exhibits one of the main features of Islamic art, the use of repeating patterns, perhaps to suggest the idea of infinity. Such a pattern that repeats along a line is known as a freeze pattern. Once you start looking for such freeze patterns, you'll see them everywhere, along the border in a wallpaper pattern or in the indigenous art of different cultures. As the name indicates, they can also be found on the facades of buildings built following the classical style, such as the building of the Ashmolean itself. Here we have another example of a freeze pattern from the Ashmolean's collection. This time, the pattern repeats in a vertical arrangement. The richly decorated door is made of ebony and ivory. It was created in Egypt around six to 700 years ago. While the pattern is definitely finite here, we could imagine it repeating forever. One key feature that makes these images so attractive is that they are highly symmetric. But what is a symmetry? Well, symmetry is an operation that can be done to an image so that the resulting image is identical to the starting one. For example, if we reflected the left side of the human body to the right and the right to the left, then the resulting image would look much the same. Thus, the human body has a vertical line of reflection symmetry. However, our heads don't look like our feet, so we don't have a horizontal line of symmetry. One particular symmetry that all three patterns have is translational symmetry. We can displace our pattern by a certain finite amount and it exactly covers the original pattern. A freeze pattern may also have other forms of symmetry. For example, we could reflect our image on the door in its central line and we get an identical image. We can also, if reflect, in a line at a right angle to the pattern, again getting an identical image. Finally, combining these symmetries, we can also rotate the pattern by 180 degrees and again get an identical image. Returning to the pair of Ottoman tiles, we notice that this pattern has fewer symmetries. Because of the way the flowers and leaves are arranged, it only has translational symmetry, but no other symmetries. If we reflect it or rotate it, we get different looking patterns with the flowers pointing down rather than up or right rather than left. It's not hard to find other examples of frieze patterns. Let us look at this style from Turkey from the 16th century. This actually has two patterns, but let us just look at the one with the blue background and flowers. Continuing, this is a frieze. This only has translational symmetry also and no other symmetry. A mathematician would then say that our tiles from Turkey have the same configuration of symmetries. The only symmetry these patterns admit is the translational one. On the other hand, the pattern found on the Egyptian door has a much richer set of symmetries, including also reflections and rotations. We thus know that there are at least two different symmetry configurations. We may want to ask how many possible configurations are there altogether? In other words, can we specify what all three patterns will look like, regardless of the decoration they use? This question illustrates a general mathematical principle. 
the quest for classification, the wish to understand all possible solutions to an abstract mathematical problem. As it turns out, this classification question has a very precise and concise answer. Mathematicians can prove that there are exactly seven possible symmetric configurations, or symmetric groups as we call them. They can all be schematically illustrated by simple frieze-like images. While these images retain none of the beauty of our Islamic friezes, each of them has a unique and different symmetric group that sets them apart from all the other patterns. For example, number one corresponds to the image found on our tiles, only possessing translational symmetry. Number seven corresponds to the frieze found on the Egyptian door with translational symmetry as well as all possible reflections and rotations. The other patterns allow other configurations of symmetries. To illustrate one of the other configurations, let us look at this prayer rug from Iran, perhaps a hundred years old. There's a lot of patterns on this rug, but let us just concentrate on the frieze running along its right edge and ignore its colors. If we do that, we get a pattern which corresponds to configuration number four. It has translational symmetry and one reflection, but no other symmetries. Thus, it's different from the previous configurations we have seen. Let us conclude our tour of the Ashmolean's treasures by looking at this hexagonal tile made in Syria sometime in the 15th century. This tile was most likely used in a wallpaper pattern covering the two-dimensional surface of a wall. By going into two dimensions, we increase our ability to make complex patterns. While there were only seven different frieze patterns, there are 17 different wallpaper patterns. The Ashmolean Museum does not have items illustrating each of these types. However, it is said that the walls of the Alhambra in Cordoba have geometric designs corresponding to all these wallpaper configurations. But why are such classification theorems important? One could argue that the description of all frieze groups or wallpaper groups is just a mathematical curiosity. But scientists are really interested in the generalization of these ideas to the third dimension. Specifically, the classification of repetitive three-dimensional patterns allows us to discover fundamental physical properties of crystals, which can then guide us to their possible industrial applications. And with only a small stretch of the analogy, one could argue that studying symmetry properties of all the elementary particles building up our universe has led to a better understanding of all physical matter around us. Completing that task would be no small feat indeed.